the Humble LED. These wonderful little light emitting diodes are arguably one of the most important aspects to your props, costumes, and other projects. Why is that, you ask? Well, these little bundles of light give your project life. Whether it's a single light or many, lighting can make your creation feel alive. There is, however, a catch. You must be a mathematical engineer to work with LEDs. You need years of experience with soldering. Be a master code writer. And at the very least, be working on your third PhD in electrical engineering. Nope, none of that's true. Look at me, I'm not a PhD, unless they give uh, PhDs to geeks or masteries of geek. So today, my friends, let's explore the LED. Let's give you a little basic knowledge so that you can add a little life to your project. Yeah, today, let's dive into a little geekication. And now it's time for some geekication. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this Chogi Geek wants to explore some geekication, and we want to help with one of the number one questions we get asked. How do you work with electronics? Specifically today, we're going to talk about the LED. But before we dive into the electronics portion of this, let's get some basic tools for you to get started. I want to show you just a few of my essential items, things I use most of all when doing electronic builds. Number one is the soldering iron. I've had mine for a number of years and it's nothing fancy. This full kit runs about $30 on Amazon and in my opinion, it's enough to get you going. Now you're gonna find that there are a lot of various types of soldering iron kits and stations out there. I'm not gonna dive into the differences in this episode. For now, we're gonna find something affordable that gets the job done. One key thing for me is a small clean tip. These tips are interchangeable and I do have replacements for this. However, keeping this tip clean, it can make it last a very long time. So how do we keep this clean of solder and crud? Well, that brings us to number two, the soldering tip cleaner. Basically, it's a brass sponge inside a nifty little holder. As your tip collects excess solder or gets a little gunked up, you can quickly plunge into the brass sponge and just like C-3PO in an oil bath, you're clean and ready for the next task. Now, one additional little tip for cleaning is to get yourself some tip tinner. And that actually will prevent oxidation from forming on the end of your solder iron. All you do is put a little bit on there, wipe it off with a damp towel or cloth or sponge, and you're on your way. Now, if you're going to solder electronics, you're actually gonna need number three, which is solder wire. There is a large variety of solder wire, different manufacturers, diameters, and so on. I'm also not gonna cover all of these. I'm going to instead suggest the one I use most often, which is made by Mayum, and it's a 10 lead solder. Now I'm gonna put a link in the description below that covers all different types of solder. I'm using a 0.32 inch solder for most of my electronics. Next, you're gonna want a pair of cutters. My favorite are the micro cutters. They're not terribly expensive and I have a large variety because I use them for more than just electronics. When it comes to cutting, I also really love my wire strippers and I have three types. The first have various sizes for wire as well as a crimp and cut feature. The second is an automatic wire stripper with a bit of adjustment. And this is my third, the wire stripper that has self-adjusting as well as the crimp and cut features. The Irwin is the most expensive of these cutters and it's actually the one I prefer the most, but any three will get the job done. Now the tools we listed will go a long way to get you going with electronics, but here's just a couple of bonus tools that I find really valuable. Helping hands. These might be the secret sauce in making soldering easy. I use this set for years and for mobile soldering, I still do. This set I installed in our soldering station build, and I love them. A soldering mat is another great addition. It's heat resistant silicone and it makes working with all the small parts wonderful. Finally, a prototyping breadboard. These are amazing to quickly mock up a circuit or for a project to test everything prior to soldering your project together. Okay, we covered some tools and some basic bonus stuff, but just keep in mind that this is a crash course in some basic electronics. There's lots of things we didn't cover, and there's lots of things we didn't go into more detail on the things that we did cover. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. But I'm gonna have links in the description below, along with all the places you can 
purchase these items and you can learn more about them there. The LED. It seems to be one of the most common asked questions that we get on the channel. It's one of those things that if you've never done electronics can be a little intimidating and there's certainly ways that you can ruin these. So we're going to do several Geekication episodes between our projects to try to help you with as much on electronics as possible. For today, however, we're going to focus on this little LED and give you some insight. But stick through to the end because I do have a little bit of a cheat code for you on these. On the LED itself, you have two legs, a long and a short. The long is the anode or the positive. The short is the cathode or the negative. The most important thing about working with an LED is to understand the flow of power. This prevents you from burning out this little bulb. So I'm gonna do a little demonstration with a nine volt battery and our little LED. And I'm gonna connect them direct. I'm gonna take the positive to the positive terminal and the negative to the negative terminal. And I want you to watch the light. Did you see it? The little flash? This poor little guy is now dead and there's no bringing him back to life. Not even as a force ghost. So what happened? Why did it die? Well, the simple answer is too much of everything. Basically, we didn't control the current. There was no resistance in our circuit. With most LEDs, you have to limit the amount of current flowing across it in order to prevent it from burning out. And that's where resistors come in play. Now you're gonna find that there are all types of resistors. So get out a calculator, dust off that old mathematics book from college, because it's about to get ridiculously complicated. I would think that that would be a great way for the story to go in a much more original one. Nope, that's a joke. I'm no math expert. I use a calculator to figure out the 18% gratuity when I go to a restaurant. So by now we know that we need a power source, a resistor, and the LED in order to get up and running. But we still don't technically know how to choose the correct resistor. A good resistor that works with most LEDs is a 330 ohm resistor. I've had a lot of success with that. Now I can already hear all the electronic engineers out there cracking their knuckles and getting ready to attack. But here's the truth. I'm a prop maker, a costume builder, and all I really want is some flashy lights for my space stuff. The truth is there are actual equations and ways to figure out exactly which resistor you need based on the LEDs you're using. I've linked to sparkfung.com in the description below and they have a heat test, they have the equations, and they have a lot of other great information to help you properly determine which resistor to use with the LED you have. And I can already hear you. Oh, bantha crap, I thought you said this was gonna be easy. Now I've got equations and everything is gonna get really complicated. Relax, it's not. When getting started, I used mostly five millimeter LEDs and I used what was commonly referred to as the get you going resistor, which is the 330 ohm resistor. So if you're just getting started out and the equations and the tables and charts get to be a little overwhelming, don't worry. Just try the 330 ohm with a five millimeter LED, double check your voltage and you'll be good to go. Now that does lead me to multiple LEDs. What if my control panel has more than three or 12 or a hundred? Easy enough, let's take a look. When working with more than one LED, there are two ways to wire them, in series or parallel. So for example, with three LEDs that are all rated at two volts and 20 milliamps each, you will need a combined six volts to power them efficiently. Your milliamps, however, will remain the same. I'm using a nine volt battery as an example, so I have plenty of voltage. However, keep in mind that the more LEDs I add, the more power it will require and the faster that will drain your power source. When wiring in parallel, you'll need to provide a resistor to each LED. And in this case, your voltage remains the same across all of your connections. So my nine volt battery here makes it a bit easier in my opinion. However, with parallel wiring, you increase the amount of current needed. That means you need a resistor at each LED as you see here. So what do I do? How do I decide? Well, I'm gonna give you my example. This isn't a preferred method or the best method. It's just what works for me on most of my projects and that's working in parallel. Working in parallel does mean that I have to know which resistor is best for which LED I'm using. 
And believe it or not, different color LEDs can actually have different voltages. So a lot of people will avoid this because it seems stressful to figure this out. However, remember at the beginning of this video when I said I had an easy solution for you? Well, here it is. This is a pre-wired LED. And what does that mean for you? It means that you don't have to figure out which resistor is best to make this LED work. Actually, the resistor is built in. It's wired in directly to the LED itself, which means I can take this nine volt battery and I can power it directly. This particular LED is rated between nine and 12 volts. And I'll put links in the description below. These awesome little guys end up in about 90% of all my projects because I don't want the hassle and the headache of not only figuring out which resistor, but also soldering all those together. And that brings me to the next thing that's great about these. I don't necessarily have to solder. And if you've watched any of our builds before, you've noticed that I actually will wire nut this together in a lot of the projects I'm doing versus soldering. So when I take these and I wire nut them together, I'm basically wiring them in parallel. I can have all of my voltage connected to one lead, which I know will tie to the resistor. And then I can link all of my ground or negatives to the other. And then I can power them either with a wall power supply that's rated to 12 volts, or I can use a battery. Remember, these are rated from nine volts to 12 volts. Now, before you go out and call the electronics police, realize that this tutorial is only scratching the surface. There are absolutely calculations and math involved in figuring out how to work with multiple LEDs in a project. And we're going to cover that in more depth in the future. Keep in mind that for today, I wanted to give you some cursory knowledge around some of the basic tools you're gonna need and some simple things to get a single LED or maybe two or three lit up for your project with the least amount of stress. I've put some links to websites in the description below that are really going to help you with some of those deeper dive questions, as well as some recommendations on tools and things that I didn't cover. When it comes to electronics, my friends, we have a lot more work to do. Everything from just some random blinking lights to doing some complex programming and code writing in Arduino to pull off some really amazing things for our projects. So if you find value in this, if you think that we should expand on the electronics training, put it in the description below. Let us know what it is that you'd like to learn. Tell us where you're having trouble with electronics in your projects so that we can help. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And now, now my friends, you've had your geekication. Now I'm gonna put a link in the description of book. Bo Oops. <laughs> Lost my train of thought completely. <laughs>